Namaste and good afternoon, everyone. I am your host, Dr. Karan Thakur, welcoming you all uh, for this very special Facebook live session that we have on the occasion of World Heart Day. Though all matters of the heart are given the most importance on World Heart Day, we believe that by the end of this session, with the help of the panel of our experts, we will be able to make you take care of your heart as an everyday priority. Because let's face it, the heart matters all the time, every time, and each day. Heart disease continues to be the nation's number one health problem. 29th September, as you all know, is World Heart Day. And it's a great opportunity for us to take a pause and reconsider what we can do for our heart. Beating cardiovascular disease and taking good care of your heart is something that should matter to everyone. This session's primary objective is to prompt you, the viewer, to take a moment to reflect on this very important question. Am I taking care of my heart? And what more can I do? And I believe that with this panel that we have here with us today, not only will you answer both questions, but you'll actually be able to help others along the way as well. So without further ado, let me welcome this uh, star-studded panel that we have with us. Uh, first and foremost, Dr. Mukesh Goyal. Dr. Mukesh is a well-recognized and esteemed name amongst the top cardiologists in the country. He has been working as senior consultant uh, in the field of cardiovascular surgery at Indrapasa Apollo Hospitals for well over the past 15 years. And he has successfully completed over 3,000 heart operations. Uh, Dr. Mukesh, Welcome to this session. Hi, Karan. Uh, it's my pleasure to be on this session and uh, share some chit chat with the viewers. <laughs> Always welcome that. Uh, next on the panel is Dr. Jeenal Parma. She is a senior consultant dietitian uh, at the Apollo Hospitals in Ahmedabad. With her extensive understanding of diet and the role it plays in health, we intend to get the best recommendations out of her for not only just heart health, but comprehensive health. So, uh, Dr. Jinal, welcome to this session. Thank you so much. And it's been a great to be a part of the fantastic team and uh, enhance my knowledge as well as spread the awareness for the win on this World Heart Day. Thank great. you so much. Great. And last but not the least, we have the renowned fitness expert, Mr. K. Vijay Simha. He is not only a fitness, uh, fitness consultant uh, at Your Life uh, Apollo, but he is also uh, one of the best known names uh, in fitness um, and also in, in, in personal wellness. Uh, his philosophy is to first ensure that everybody understands the importance of doing functional training uh, and how you can navigate this busy life while also incorporating uh, a good exercise regime and uh, uh, good tips to keep yourself healthy overall. So, Mr. Sima, thank you for uh, being here and being part of this session. Thank you. It's my pleasure being with all you people over here. So, uh, let's dive straight in. Uh, Dr. Mukesh, uh, I'd like to draw your attention uh, to one very peculiar thing about heart disease. Um, it is that, uh, you know, some of these symptoms of heart disease may be silent. Uh, but some are uh, definitely present and one can actually sense them. Um, so if if you have any such symptom, what is it that you should look out for? Or if you're, uh, uh, you know, if, if you know somebody who's showing certain symptoms, what should you do? So my questions, uh, my, actually I have two questions. First is, what are these early signs and symptoms that you should watch out for? And two, uh, what to do in case of uh, you showing any of these? Uh, very well put, Karan. Actually, the symptoms which indicate that one might be having trouble with his heart, basically there are two kinds of symptoms. One is when it is a long-standing symptom and uh, like chest discomfort when a person starts working for something, starts walking, maybe after a few hundred meters or a kilometer, or when he is climbing stairs, or like he's doing some extra work other than just sitting or uh, working in a stationary mode. And if he was not getting this trouble before, but now for last few months or days, he is starting this kind of a trouble. So it is indicative that he might be having some blockage in the artery which are supplying to the muscle. And these are called chronic stable injuries. 
so he should consult a cardiologist and go undergo appropriate tests like lipid profile blood sugar blood pressure and then the most important what we call a stress ecg because he doesn't have symptom at rest so the ecg at rest will be normal but then in stress ecg a uh, most common form of a stress ecg is what we call treadmill test for tmt so there a person is made to walk on a treadmill and simultaneous ecg is being recorded and then they see whether he develops any same symptoms which he was complaining and uh, whether there are any associated ecg changes or not so it will tell us whether the, whether the person is suffering and whether we need to now further uh, investigate him by doing angiography and other things so this is regarding a uh, chronic stable angina or a stable heart symptom but other like very important and critically a uh, heart attack so in angina what happens that there is a blockage which has developed in the heart arteries but there is some supply and it is only during the increase activity that the increased blood supply cannot be met and that's why the person develops these kind of symptoms but actually what happens in heart attack that there is a clot formation at the site of block and uh, that area of the heart muscle which is being supplied by that plug it the blood supply to that area totally shuts off and the heart muscle starts dying and this is a very serious condition and this condition is basically called heart attack what we call heart attack and in medically it is called acute myocardial infarction so uh, uh, urgent recognition of this uh, condition and urgent treatment is very very important because what we call time is muscle so the earlier you act to open that blockage the more salvage of the heart muscle you can do so how do we recognize that somebody or might be we are having a heart attack so there is a continuous chest discomfort a feeling of heaviness in the chest sometimes the person might think that's a, like a elephant has sat on my chest and there is sweating and uh, there is uh, anxiety and uh, the person is not he doesn't feel all right and uh, he is in uh, uh, clear cut discomfort and these symptoms they don't go away while even while resting they might or may not come on while working but the hallmark of angina is as soon as the person stops doing any activity the symptoms go away in few minutes but here the symptoms they persist and they do not go away so if these kind of symptoms they persist for more than 15 20 minutes so uh, almost always uh, consider it as a person is having heart attack and the only thing to do is to calm down if it is a colleague or a family member just tell him or her to calm down lie down and call for ambulance from the nearest hospital don't do right. anything yourself do not try to do anything right so uh, very clearly you told us if uh, you have some discomfort or some signs and symptoms uh, while you are exerting so that's one type of uh, symptoms that you could be sort of uh, displaying and the other is while you are at rest or you've not exerted yourself so there are two types and very clearly you told us what to do it's to get uh, uh, medical attention as soon as possible or if you're seeing anybody going through this to get medical attention now that begs the question what are the contributory factors for you to get heart disease in the first place so what we call that there are no definite factors as such but what we call risk factor so the risk factor increase one's probability of having a heart disease many many fold compared to a person who does not have these risk factors so we divide the risk factors in two categories one are fixed and they are not in anybody's control so it is like a as as we grow older so one is uh, more probable and more prone to have heart disease so especially uh, in women more than 55 years of age and in men more than 45 years of age they are more prone to have heart disease then uh, second is family history positive family history if somebody has a heart disease in a younger age like if somebody in the family is having heart disease 
in 70s or 80s. So that is a natural progression and age-related degenerative changes. But if some a family member had it early, like 50, around 50, so it is considered a positive family history. And then male gender. Men are naturally more prone to have heart disease compared to women. So these are the risk factors which are fixed. Then there are environmental risk factors or lifestyle risk factors which we can control, which we can measure and control and try to prevent heart disease. So the, who are, what are these risk factors? One is uh, high blood cholesterol level, especially low density lipoprotein, second smoking, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, blood pressure, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and uh, stressful lifestyle, mental or physical. So these are some of the risk factors uh, which uh, increase probability of having heart disease. Right. So um, thank you for that, uh, Dr. Mukesh. So we've understood what could be the contributory factors for you to get those symptoms. And I think one clear one was the modifiable risk factors, uh, a lot of it relating to uh, your lifestyle. And uh, what was very important, I think, in that was that a lot of it relates to your diet. And which uh, brings me to you, Dr. Jino, that uh, uh, as Dr. Mukesh was saying, there are a lot of modifiable risk, uh, risk factors, um, obesity, uh, lack of a sedentary lifestyle, high cholesterol, uh, and things of that nature. And I think a lot of that has to do with the diet that you eat. Uh, so what are some of the foods uh, that contribute to poor cardiac health? And what are some of the foods that we should eat more of? Um, and is there any magic diet for a healthy heart? Uh, so basically, there is no specific a magic diet. But uh, we have to uh, understand what are the future causes through the food. So we have to select a food very wisely. So first we understand what the food choices cause our health. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, nowadays uh, hypertension, obesity, it's very common in early ages also. Even our uh, dietary patterns also very disturbed, like more of junk foods and fried food items and not uh, all are following with them healthy lifestyle as well. So all this we have all these are in a negative signs so we for the positive we have to include uh four uh, diet mantras in our routine first not diet alone can work so first is we have to focus on diet another is physical health third one is mental health and fourth one is our lifestyle modification so we have to plan our routine or set our routine in a way like we have to fix our meal times and uh, we have to add a regular exercise at least uh, 30 minutes per day and yes we have to select a healthy food choices in our daily diet like uh, we have to include uh, more fibers in diet we have to avoid uh, fried food items select more uh, bufa and bufa fats uh, and uh, remove a uh, very diminishing level of the saturated fats. So all these uh, therapies, uh, if we are using in the, or applying in the day-to-day -day life, it will be uh, prevent our health uh, from the causing uh, uh, this heart disease or we can uh, also prevent another subordinate uh, diseases as well. So right. this is uh, main and common theory applicable for the all. Right. So uh, Dr. Jinal, thanks for telling us that there is no magic diet, but then you've given us some mantras uh, to follow. And um, both of you are also uh, pointing towards um, you know, a question that needs to be asked, and I think no better person than Mr. Vijay, and that is we've we we've gotten into sedentary lifestyles, and I think during COVID, uh, because of a lack of options, I think people became more sedentary. Um, what is the importance of, uh, of exercise in preventing heart disease? Yeah, basically, uh, exercise, it will increase the blood flow in your body, which is nothing but our uh, circulate. Uh, uh, central nerve, uh, central vascular system, and uh, so the more you exercise, the more uh, blood gets pumped through the heart through the entire body, and more oxygen is uh, 
being given to all the tissues of your body. So uh, if we have a complete sedentary life, then uh, LDL cholesterol levels will start shooting up, which is uh, which leads to uh, even uh, it even causes to type 2 diabetes as well. So the healthier if you keep the cardiovascular system plays its role in a very well way. So the stroke volumes and everything will be uh, in its place, and the body will get the enough uh, oxygen levels and all the muscles they'll work in a proper way. But if you keep uh, stay completely sedentary, there won't be any movement of physical activity of your body, so you won't be burning any the amount of calories what you've been taking. Usually, they say we need to take around two thousand calories per day. But if we stay sedentary, we won't be burning uh, hardly like four hundred calories all through twenty four hours if you calculate. You might be hardly burning around four hundred to five hundred calories. Still, you are depositing around fifteen hundred calories of your uh, daily calories which you are supposed to burn. So that keeps piling up uh, day by day, and as day passes by, uh, the LDL cholesterol levels, the bad fat keeps accumulating, and which leads to heart diseases. uh type 2 diabetes hypertensions and all these kind of uh, uh critical illness issues if you stay sedentary right so um what is your recommendation for you know a typical adult male or female uh, what is the level of exercise uh, per week or per day what is it that as a rule of thumb one can follow so for beginners it's not like uh, if they are uh, any new person beginners we usually tend to differentiate the people when they come to the gym basing upon their uh, past experiences of workouts if they are new we call, we place them under beginners and if they have been new doing uh, workouts for on and off we say them intermediate and if they have been doing it for pretty long we say advanced but according to lifestyle and everything the norm should be around uh, 150 to 200 minutes per uh, per month Sorry, that should be around uh, yeah per week. Per week, one fifty to two hundred minutes per week of moderate intensity workouts. You need you are supposed to do. If not, you can break it down to seventy to hundred minutes of high intensity workouts. Right. But uh, bear in mind that you need to check for uh, past medical history before working out anything. You need to consult. Uh, you need to get your complete uh, blood pictures. Uh, you need to have a general physician consultation. get your total body checked up before uh, starting any workouts and then in the, uh, basing upon that if you're not, you need to look into your family history as well to check if they're having any congenital issues like congenital heart diseases or anything then basing upon those then you need to plan your activity but if anyone having congenital heart issues and all they need to keep it very low the intensity level should be less than the moderate initially slowly and then as they keep on uh, working out for let's say 4 weeks and all then they can slowly step into the moderate uh, level of the workouts so basically it should be around 150 to 200 minutes a week right and moderate and, intensity workouts right so that's pretty clear uh, yeah and is it is it possible for a person to actually over exercise and harm your health yes please uh, see over exercising is always uh, obviously it increases load in your uh, on your cardiovascular system right as you push your body beyond your limits even uh, the heart it needs to pump your body so but a per day almost it will uh, beat around 1 lakh times per day our heart it pumps around 2000 gallons of uh, blood into your body but if you over exercise and push it beyond its limits it's also just a muscle so it will it will also get fatigue and uh, see if you over exercise then uh, coronary artery calcifications happen which indirectly leads to atrial fibrillation that is what we call uh, irregular heart beats and all so over exercise leads to again heart issues and all those things right um so that that's pretty clear on you know the the harmful effects of exercise uh, and also what is recommended and what type of exercise uh, we should do so dr mukesh i'll just come back to you um uh, as mr vijay was saying that you know there is a, there is a way to get into an exercise regime especially if you are starting uh you know it should start from a moderate intensity and uh, depending on the level of your fitness should you actually ramp it up and there again there should be a peak uh, even if you are a very fit or an active person but we've also seen that fit and active sometimes is not a very clear cut definition for you not having heart disease uh, there are numerous examples some famous and some unreported uh, of young people in their 30s and 40s getting a sudden cardiac arrest and even dying 
Um, why is this happening? Is it just being overreported now? Uh, or is it actually something uh, which we should be mindful of? And what, what is your take on it? Uh, current very valid question. Uh, first of all, we associate a heavy exercise and a, a sculpted body with the uh, health and fitness. So, in actual, it is not there. It is not like that. So, our ability, we, if one, we have to differentiate whether a person is a trained athlete or a person is a non-athlete. So, athletes, they have been being uh, undergoing training since childhood. So, their uh, body stamina, their fitness, their conditioning is totally different from a non-athletic person. So, the persons who are not athletes, they should keep the intensity of exercise till moderate level and should not be doing over overdoing it. And Vijay has very uh, beautifully explained uh, before me. Second, uh, so as we were talking about angina versus heart attack. So obviously they were they are doing exercise and they are not having any symptoms. So it means they don't have angina or the blockages are not that we are affecting the supply of blood to the heart muscle during exercise. But still they can have a heart attack because the heart attack the pathology and physiology is different. So heart attack mostly happens when there is a non-obstructive plaque sitting in the coronary artery. So normally a person starts developing symptoms because of the blockage. When this uh, plaque blocks more 70% or more of the coronary artery diameter. So that will produce angina. But heart attack generally happens when there is a minor plaque. Maybe it might be causing 30 or 40% blockage only. And obviously it will not cause symptoms. But what happens during extreme stress, exercise, mental or physical, whatever. So there is a small fracture or which happens on the surface of that plaque and blood clot forms over there, which cut off the supply to that area. And as Vijay also said that over exercise can lead to increased calcification in the coronary artery. And there might be changes happening in the heart muscle also. So, uh, extreme physical exercise is not a insurance against uh, a sudden cardiac death or arrest. Second, this is definitely uh, this celebrity uh, having these unfortunate episodes and uh, then it is being widely reported in media. It is basically a good thing so that the people can become aware and they can... Uh, uh, they understand that over uh, gymming is not a panacea or it's not a mecca. So you have to take care and keep it in moderate intensity. Right. So uh, just because you are physically fit or look physically fit uh, does not mean that you know your cardiovascular health would be good. And then I think it takes back to your point that you should actually get cardiac assessments or preventive health checks done. Uh, you know, if you enter a particular age group or have had a family history. So I think all these issues are interlinked along with diet as you know was being highlighted. But uh, more contemporary um, is the issue of a person who's had COVID and is also reporting uh, you know, uh, cardiac issues, especially uh, you know, alongside their exercise routine. So uh, Dr. Mukesh, what is your take on these three issues? Uh, uh, Post-COVID recovery, a person wanting to get back into some sort of an exercise and the risk to your heart. So, current COVID is a very mysterious disease and it is a very new disease. And only now we are like just starting to understand what COVID causes in what organs of the body. Obviously, when the COVID two years back came as a sudden uh, illness causing pneumonia and leading to death, so then it was an acute pneumonia. But now we know that uh, the COVID can affect kidneys, COVID can affect heart, COVID can affect brain, COVID can affect liver also, and uh, peripheral vessels. There is not, not a body organ which cannot be like the COVID does not affect. So, uh, and other than lungs, the most common COVID what causes a myocardial inflammation or inflammation of the heart muscle, myocardial. Another effect of COVID is that in small blood vessels in the body, 
it causes microclots so which affect the blood supply to the tissues and it generally happens in uh, heart muscle and uh, uh, gut lungs peripheral vascular so all these things are get, get affected by covid and we have also noticed that uh, there is an increased incidence of diabetes the person who are not diabetic early they have developed new on the diabetes after being affected with covid and our low covid is now a well recognized phenomena so all these things so one should be like even if one has recovered from covid illness or a covid pneumonia he should be aware that there might be other body organs especially the heart which are still affected with covid so how to uh, start a exercise and physical fitness regime after one recovered from covid so i will advise them first principle is first what you call a rule of the thumb is don't tire yourself so you start a uh, light exercise like walking uh, swim you can start swimming or you can start cycling but do till the extent you feel comfortable and as soon as you start feeling uncomfortable stop it there and then build it up from slowly for over many months like maybe a few minutes extra every week kind of a that and avoid heavy weight training or extreme running or uh, jogging for long periods uh, initially after covid right so that's excellent advice uh, mr vijay uh, would you echo what dr mukesh is saying if i have had covid and i want to get back into an exercise regime i may be having moderate or you know a slightly sedentary lifestyle uh, what is your recommendation when a person like me would uh, say show up at the gym uh, versus a person who's been working out throughout and has not had covid uh, how should you get back to your exercise uh, routine yeah as uh, dr sir mukesh has said like as soon as you are uh, post recovery it will take at least some time post covid but still your lungs are little weak so we can't push much harder on your uh, respiratory system as well why because during exercise you need a uh, uh, inhalation and exhalation is very important while performing any exercise so if as if we tend to push heavy weights so we tend to breathe heavier that will uh, automatically increase load on your lungs due to covid already your lungs have been little uh, out of the uh, lee so we need to take uh, like dr uh, sir mukesh sir said we need to take it very light initially uh as earlier you before post covid uh, pre covid as you've been working out for like say 50 minutes or 60 minutes with a good uh, moderate intensity or high intensity level workout but once you are uh, we became covid positive and uh, then uh, you are uh, became covid negative and you are recovering from covid negative then in order to get back onto your uh, fitness regime you need to start just with hardly 15 to 20 minutes of workout per day then you need to take it very slowly and uh, you need to concentrate on your breathing patterns uh, i would say like you can uh, walk for uh, 10 or 15 to 20 minutes and then you can uh, do more of yoga rather than going and pushing weights in the gym it's better to do yoga and uh, 20 minutes of walking that would be great to for initial couple of weeks for two weeks then from third week you can increase like 5 minutes of uh, walking from 20 to 25 but you need to keep doing your yoga regularly constantly every day so that will increase the lung cap but because we have been seen many people complaining of bronchitis uh, post covid where they have difficulty in breathing and all so obviously we are, we are, we asked him to go and uh, consult any pulmonologist and get their uh, lungs completely checked you uh, know so if they are completely fine then we can increase the time by another 5 minutes slowly but if they are having issues i can we need to get it down to again 15 minutes or 20 minutes per day but not like a uh, heavier and very light intensity slowly after uh, four weeks or six weeks then we increase it to moderate intensity right so pretty clear that you know to be slow ramp back uh, to what you were doing probably pre covid and then build on that and also focus on your lungs because they need that extra support so things like breathing exercises and yoga would help uh, dr jinal what uh, what would you like to add on to this what uh, uh, what dr mukesh and mr vijay said uh, for a covid patient or for any person who is coming back into an exercise regime what are some of the foods that they should be taking as part of a balanced diet uh, to support you getting back into physical uh, fitness or into a regime 
Yeah, after uh, uh, post COVID, uh, many of uh, just believing in that, uh, like protein only are magic nutrients, uh, which can uh, fight with the, all our body's uh, health conditions, disease condition. So, uh, not focus only on protein part. But yes, uh, protein also be added in our diet. But as far as our body's requirement, like our body's requirement is for one gram protein per kg body weight. And if we a person uh, is uh, highly active or we can know the according to the health conditions, uh, we recommended some high protein diet, then not exceed the limit of two gram per body uh, protein, two gram per day as per the body weight and yes not only focus on the protein like i earlier said and choose the protein source like uh, which are the biological protein like low fat degree products also added and uh, other food products like uh, which are uh, containing a good amount of pufa and mufa along with a good amount of fibers like add uh, mixed seeds uh, add uh, detox water it's because detoxing our body is more important even all our meals are having a complete meal like a healthy plate we have to balance all the nutrients not focus on major nutrients only we have to include major as well as minor so we have to include a good amount of salads so seasonal salads and fibers as well as fruits protein complex carbohydrates main focus on complex carbohydrate rather than the simple carbohydrates and yes we have to keep hydrate ourselves like uh, agar uh, we don't have any idea that this much of water we have to drink then it's a uh, you know very basic like uh, we are uh, plan our routine like one one glass water per hour so it's also fulfill our requirement also and yes if we are not uh, able to uh, complete all the whole days our needs so we have to earlier before one day we have to plan our diet and do not add any fancy food items which we need to uh, extra preparation time or another extra need so somebody else to be uh, you know prepare some extra another cooking recipes for only one person uh, added a uh, recipe simple traditional recipes which we are following th uh, through the time and uh, yes we have to limit our portion size as well like uh, we know that rice uh, over consumption of rice also we are not good so we have to cut off the portion size as well uh, for rice instead of add we have to salads and another food items which are helpful for our health so likewise we can uh, manage our routine as well as uh, we already plan earlier and uh, so we have to look like next next meal what we requirement so it will be in a prior year data right. along with that uh, uh, many food which contain antioxidants and natural vitamin c like traditional foods uh, like star fruits and uh, this uh, indian berries so that it uh, it will be seasonal foods but uh, yeah whenever the season of that particular foods we must have to include in our health and yes do not uh, uh, go 100 100 percent for the supplement or do not follow the fed diets uh, always uh, according to your biomarkers and repeat profile uh, after the consultation of qualified dietitians only trial a diet don't uh, decide by your own your any uh, tips or google diet right right so uh, which brings me to you mr vijay which is you know what dr jinal said um, that you know you have to look at your nutrient uh, mix you have to look at a balanced diet um, and there is this whole question of supplements. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, just buy things which are available off the shelf. And uh, for, you know, traditionally, uh, one feels that if you've been given a medicine and uh, prescription medication, you always about side, you ask about side effects. Uh, but when you take some herbal supplements or, you know, even steroids or protein, you know, uh, for your, uh, to supplement your workouts, we never ask what is the harm that it can do or whether it is, uh, useful for you. What is your take on supplements and 
uh, what role does it play for good heart health and also what are the downsides of uh, such supplements or many supplements uh, when we come to supplements we we can uh, like we can call them as dietary supplements the dietary supplements usually you people they tend to take it in order to compensate the necessary vitamins and minerals if they have they are, they are unable to take through diet so we generally people we ask them to take uh, dietary supplements if they are unable to meet the necessary vitamins and minerals intakes per day but over use of mineral vitamins and minerals also is not uh, is health risk actually to say uh, in fact uh, for example people with uh, thin blood they'll have a uh, they'll be under a anticoagulant tablet medication and all but if you start taking more of vitamin k that will uh, a, that will have a impact over the anticoagulant tablets again so uh, where in where usually vitamin k we say it's uh, good for uh, body but too much of vitamin k again causes problem people are having with a uh, thin blood flow and when it comes to again uh, vitamin e vitamin e if we take more of uh, over, over use of vitamin e again it will people with a thin blood it will further uh, thin the blood more and you can start seeing bruising and nose beads for them and when it comes to there are there is another vitamin like b6 if you uh, tend to overuse b6 in a long term effect you will start seeing nerve damages because of uh, overuse of uh, vitamin b6 so i would recommend uh, always you need to keep your dietary supplements under recommended uh, First, you uh, go to the doctor, talk to the doctor, and ask him the necessary amount of uh, uh, micro mg's or uh, milligrams or micro milligrams or whatever the necessary intake the doctor help, tells us to uh, take. We are supposed to take only that, but not beyond that. And but when it comes to the steroids, usually they call it uh, anabolic androgenic steroids, which are developed from uh, testosterone. These are all synthesized from the testosterone hormones, and uh, but they have. Uh, but people they think like i can take it for a three months and then again uh, i'll be fine again i'll later again i'll offer a year of break or another six months but short term or long term uh, steroids they have a very good effect over the heart as well why because in the studies it's been said that uh, overuse of uh, steroids uh, there is an uh, increase in size of the left ventricular uh, in your heart which will uh, in the uh, which will cause atrial uh, defibrillation irregular heartbeats and uh, difficulty for the why because heart is also is muscle so these uh, steroids uh, hormones obviously they'll work more on your uh, uh, my uh, muscle protein and all so obviously it will have more load on your uh, left ventricle which is increasing load on your heart which leads to cardiac uh, dysfunction small function cardiac myopathy yeah. atrial uh, defibrillation and cardiac arrest strokes and all right so uh, i think very prudent advice there on uh, both dietary supplements and uh, anabolic steroids and uh, other such supplements that uh, people as you said you know they they don't uh, uh, weigh the the downsides of them and sometimes think that you know they can just take them for a short period of time dr mukesh i just want to move away from this conversation and uh, take you back to what you said at the start uh, of this session where you were talking about modifiable risk factors and one thing that you mentioned was on stress and i think uh, we live in an age of anxiety we are always worried about what's happening next and you know what has happened in the past uh, work life pressures various things what role does stress play in heart health um, and what is your advice uh, to de stress uh, what would you tell the average person uh, to de stress so current uh, chronic stress whether it is physical or it is mental causes uh, uh, adverse metabolic uh, changes in the body and uh, there is increase in ldl which is a bad cholesterol and uh, it causes more deposition of cholesterol which is later joined by calcium and other products and building of plaques in the blood vessels and also because uh, of the chronic stress there is uh, a blood pressure changes and uh, there is uh, irregular dietary habits and sedentary lifestyle they all of these things uh, and uh, there might be some subclinical depression so all these things get added on actually which leads to these adverse effects so these are the like changes uh, and then uh, there is a term called broken heart syndrome so it does 
it is basically different from a chronic uh, stress situation. It is whenever there is a uh, extreme acute stress, sudden stress, it might be a physical like septic shock or other things, it might be a mental. So there is, the people have observed that uh, there is a depression in the function of the heart, which may or may not recover later on. But the heart is normal to begin with, but because of the stress, the, there is a stunning and there is a depression of the function of the heart. So this is called a, a broken heart syndrome. So these are the changes which can affect uh, heart function and because of the stress. Right. So definitely stress plays a part in your heart health and not just a, a part in it can also be detrimental uh, to your heart health. Dr. Zero, I'll just uh, uh, draw your attention to what both Dr. Mukesh and Mr. Vijay have highlighted is on cholesterol uh, and stress increasing cholesterol or, you know, sedentary lifestyle increasing uh, cholesterol. Um, what can we do uh, as part of our dietary uh, substitution uh, to actually reduce uh, cholesterol? Uh, what is your recommendation? So we have uh, our body also produce a cholesterol, but we don't uh, know the actual amount and what uh, and it is a good for our body or not. We don't know. So we always have uh, keep high our good cholesterol HDL. So for that we yes definitely we uh, all include uh, dry fruits in our routine. But uh, the uh, thing is that we are not know the actual biological process how to eat the foods and add in the diet so my advice is if you are um, keep uh, dry foods in our routine so we have to eat in a soaked form and in a limited amount like a uh, According to our uh, according to our lifestyle or uh, the physical activity, we have to include at least uh, three to four soaked almond along with the uh, uh, feet, dry feet, and uh, walnuts as well. In a soaked form, it advisable. Even uh, chia seeds also uh, we have to include throughout the day at least one teaspoon. So it's are the basic tips which which can lead to increase a good cholesterol. And it will be uh, the beneficial to keep the good cholesterol to bad cholesterol ratio in a range. Right. Uh, and Dr. Mukesh, uh, another important subject uh, which is not often talked about or linked to heart disease, good heart health, is sleep or the lack of sleep. Uh, what is the role of uh, good regular sleep uh, in good heart health and uh, what what are the downsides of not getting good sleep? How does it impact the heart negative? So, current as we know that sleep is basically a reparative and regenerative process designed by nature to so that and seven to eight hours sleep is essential for every person. It depends. Some persons they are might be okay with six hours, six and a half hour, and some person might require eight or eight and a half and nine. So everybody is a little different in this aspect. But what is constant is that we need a regular sleep so that our body can regenerate the oxidative compounds which have formed during the whole uh, whole day. They can be washed out. And uh, during sleep, what happens that there is a a decrease in the amount of stress hormone like cortisol and there is increase in the amount of uh, metabolic compounds which relaxes us. So, with, and those stress hormone, they lead to all these things like increase in LDL and uh, more mobilization of uh, cholesterol from liver to the peripheral vessels and uh, there is increased uh, generation of the waste product so all these things are happening and in continuous increase amount of stress hormone cortisol, it leads to long term changes in the blood cholesterol level and uh, cardiac. Right. Um, and Mr. Vijay, how important is sleep when you are working or as part of a workout regime? Uh, as Dr. Mukesh said, it's reparative, regenerative. Uh, what is your advice to uh, people who come and ask you uh, for exercise tips or for a regime? Uh, on the role of sleep um, as uh, as a tool to you know keep yourself healthy. Yeah, as uh, Dr. Mukesar said, if you uh, have very less sleep, the stress hormone cortisol uh, cortisol enzyme secretion happens more in your body, which leads to weight gains and all. So that will automatically increase stress on your body. 
but usually we say like uh, as doctor said doctor sir said 7 to 8 hours is the ample time for any person to have that is when see while working out obviously there will be some muscle tear tissues and everything stress on the muscle and you'll have little tear and everything and that will be like a very minor uh, small fiber tears and all after that you'll have your proper uh, post workout meal and all but unless until if you sleep if you don't give enough sleep or uh, sleep that is when your muscle rests so that is how your muscle recovers in your sleep so at least you need to have 7 to 8 hours for your muscle to completely recover you post your workout so if you sleep for 7 to 8 hours your muscle will uh, recover faster and you'll be able to work out well with a very perform the same way how you did today will be able to perform well the very next day if not uh, if your muscles are not completely uh, relaxed and uh, completely recovered will have the doms they call delayed onset of muscle soreness your body will be aching all through the day and you, your activities of daily living will get uh, disturbed because of uh, lack of sleep and right uh, so sleep is not only uh, reparative and regenerative but it is also very important for you to continue uh, to carry out your exercise regime because otherwise if you are sore or if you are not really feeling up to it uh, you would probably, you know, skip a day and then sometimes that becomes a habit and self-perpetuating. So that's an important point there, Mr. Vijay. Um, uh, we are near the end of this uh, very informative session uh, uh, on uh, the occasion of World Heart Day. Uh, Dr. Mukesh, we've spoken about the problem. We've spoken about why it occurs. Uh, we've spoken about what are some of the means available to us, whether it is dietary or exercise or sleep or reducing anxiety. Um, but also, you know, uh, we all know that uh, prevention is better than cure. And um, uh, for keeping good heart health, uh, as you said, because it happens in younger people also now, it can happen in people who visibly look fit but may not be so on the inside. What is the role of preventive health checks, number one? Uh, number two, what should be part of a good health check and who should get it done? So, Karan, as uh, we have discussed in last one hour, uh, annual basically uh, by doing an annual health check, we identify the risk factors which are there in the person, and then we will, uh, we try to control those risk factors. The first is by diet and exercise, and if required, then we take help of medicine. So basically, the annual health check is, uh, I'd say that nowadays, looking at the explosion of uh, heart disease and heart issues in even a younger population. So I would advise that at least before age of 30, everyone should have one at least uh, full physical checkup. And after 30, uh, every year. So whether men or women, it should be seen for one. And uh, what we basically do th during that annual check is we measure blood cholesterol profile, lipid profile which we call, we measure blood sugar, then we measure uh, uh, what is the blood pressure and our, our routine physical check by a clinician regarding you. So basically blood chol uh, cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure. These three things are the hallmark of annual health check as far as heart health is concerned. Obviously, we do other tests also like kidney function, liver test, function, and other things when the person is getting annual health check. But as far as heart health is concerned, uh, concern, uh, lipid profile, blood sugar, and blood pressure. These three things are the hallmark. Right. And uh, would you recommend that for people who have had um, you know, heart disease or a cardiac event, uh, that they should also undergo preventive health check uh, checks after uh, they've recovered? Yes, definitely. So these are not only preventive, like in person who have never had a heart disease. And uh, rather, they, they become even more essential for person who have a, have a heart disease, heart episode. So, so that, because even after treatment, the treatment of a heart disease, whether it was by an angioplasty or a bypass surgery, it uh, treats the disease and blockage which was present at that time. But the risk factors which have caused this blockage and have led to endoplasty or a bypass surgery, they are still there. So we have to work uh, for a continuous identification of those risk factors, what are the levels, and keep to keep them under check with uh, these persons 
may may require even a more frequent check, like maybe six months rather than annual. Right. So, um, Dr. Mukesh Goyal, Dr. Jinal Parmar, Mr. Vijay Simha, thank you so much uh, for uh, being here with us for this uh, very enlightening session. Uh, we've learned so much about heart disease, why it happens. And, you know, this is such a vast subject that every time we have a conversation, something new comes out, some learning comes out. Uh, we've learned about preventive strategies. Uh, we've learned about the role of uh, sleep, of anxiety, of stress. Uh, on heart health, on how we can eat well um, and have a balanced diet that supports our exercise regimes and why exercise regimes are important. I think it's it's been a wonderful session and you would all agree that uh, that's why these experts are pioneers of healthcare uh, because of not just their experience, but their willingness to share their own experiences uh, as they see patients, as they see clients, as they see uh, people wanting advice and suggestions uh, day in and day out. So now that we've asked uh, questions out of all of these experts and got so many answers, we're asking you, uh, the listener, the viewer uh, of this session, to write back to us on this World Heart Day on what is your one secret mantra uh, for good heart health. Um, and you can write back to us, uh, you know, through a multitude of ways uh, on our, uh, you know, on the chat box uh, or on our social media platforms. Write back to us. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll host most, uh, more such sessions uh, so that they can be an in informative, interactive way of keeping healthy. Till next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and thank you for joining.